It ain't easy being a man these days. Hard to even say for sure what a man is. A provider, a lover, maybe even a hero. One thing's for sure, a journey towards being whatever a real man should be doesn't need to be done alone. The Gentle Mentor are here to help you navigate that so you never have to go alone. Hey everyone, welcome to the Gentle Mentor Podcast. It's so good to see you. It is so good to be here. Thanks for joining us again this week. We hope you've enjoyed uh, our several weeks ranting about change and certain things like that. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. Um, you know, sorry for those of you who just up. Did in the you mean of our all podcast, those types you... of things? Yeah, I did, but I didn't want to say it because I feel I feel like that's copyright. Uh, copyright. Uh, sorry, sorry for all of you who uh, just randomly unsubscribe in the middle of our videos. We really hate that, but I don't yeah. know what it is that whoever we said. that was. Chris, we, we wish we who would really just kind of ask us and say, "Hey, I'm curious about this. Or, I, I'm I, challenging I, this question because we love challenges. We love questions." So, I still yeah. believe the thing we got to do is we got to go back and watch it because <clears throat> we know the precise <laughs> moment. Where that where whoever it was unsubscribed. So you, that's that's see, in see there. See if we can figure out who was it this is. This on YouTube. This was on YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Is like all that behind the scenes, like the the graphs and stuff, actually means things. Apparently, ah, I didn't realize. Okay. It took that's that really to that's really out. interesting. That's really that's really cool. Yeah, well, they give me all them uh, charts and it's, graphs. It's back it's there. it's unlikely. It's so the the chances of that person still watching this episode probably is very slim to none. But Could if you be. are by chance. Please let us know what happened. We just maybe it was just a slip of the mouse. Yeah, you know it's okay. It and you know what? Anything. We're not hurt. It's just interesting. I think more than anything that it just happened right in the middle of. of... Yeah, something we said was so horrific. Click. <laughs> right. That's it. Right. Right. I just don't know what that could be. But into... yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Like I said, I. I so feel yeah, we are uh, just a couple of guys here hanging out, chit chatting life and change and we want to help you make some changes that you need to make in your life and so we're just here to encourage you and be on your side really more than anything so i, yeah. I hope you're coming through so we've there, talked about all kinds of things you were you were chopping up <laughs> what was i i was chopping your up video well i was talking audio. i don't know maybe maybe you know excuse you <laughs> Yours is kind of choppy too, but I think I think we'll be okay. So anyway, well, yeah, highly All professional right. pro so, broadcast so that we do. What's on the agenda tonight? What's on the What's on the agenda tonight? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's kind of kind of kind of dealer's choice. Tonight. I I I did a lot of uh, uh, spilling my guts last time, <clears throat> which was very nice and cleansing and cathartic. You did. But uh, you, did? you wanted to, uh, you had mentioned that you had things in your life that you've also changed apparently something in the time space continuum because <laughs> you kind of doing karate poses there a couple of times um didn't know if there were I, things you wanted to talk about if not i have kind of a back pocket thing that i wanted to bring up at some point just because i think it's a great topic when you're talking about change because what most people really want to know the answer to the thousand million dollar question about change so we could do either one of those. I don't know if you if you want to if you felt like there was things you wanted to share about your process of change and and realization of the of the fresh and clean Mark Walker twenty twenty three edition or 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 you know I I feel like that a uh, past. <laughs> there's been a, I do I do want to dig around into your back pocket a little bit uh, perhaps let's do that but <laughs> I do want to talk about the change that was forced on me. I mean, uh, I went through a lot of change in the past, uh, you know, 18, in a period of 18 months. There That'd was a be lot great. of change. <clears throat> a lot of what yeah. we talked about in one of the early episodes was like, <laughs> some change ain't because you want to do it. Some of it right. comes to get you. So that would right, be great. Right. Yeah. And then there's a, there's a, um, I guess, uh, what am I trying to say? There's, there's a cost or a price to pay for the change that even I wanted to make. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, and it was an unexpected cost as well. Um, you know, I, I had left a position that I've been in for seven years and lost a good friend out of it. Lost a couple of really good friends out of it just because, yeah, that's sad. you know, I'm out. And it's like, ah, you know, I was really hoping that these are, you know, lifelong friends, you know. Uh, I only have two, 
I guess. Well, I have to count my wife. There's three lifelong friends that I have that I've kept for quite a long period of time. I mean, you know, our relationship is going on 25 20, oh, 25 years now. I think we just crossed the 25 year threshold. I think we're, we're at year 26. Yeah, we're so that's a long one. We're heading for 30. My uh, my my relationship with Jason has been uh, gosh, we were like in ninth yeah, grade, high school, fifth right? grade, yeah, in high school together. So maybe even junior high. So that that goes back uh, nearly 40 years, just about. Um, so yeah, and then of course the relationship with my wife has been 27, 28 years now, and. Yeah, it's just hard to hold on to those, and and then when you, when you think you find one, I guess a relationship or a friendship that you want to hold on forever, and then all of a sudden it's like it just explodes. You're just like, wow, that's that's really bizarre. I, I really was really hoping that, um, you know, you'd have an input and I'd have an input in our lives together for for a long period of time, but it just doesn't happen. But anyway, all that all that changed. That that was the one thing that I. It was, a, I guess, a, a repercussion of a change that I wanted to make. Of course, then then my, my dad dying, and then my sister dying, and then my mom dying, all within a period of 18 months, and having to take in my nephew uh, to live with us because my sister had died. Uh, Wait, yeah, a lot none of, of that was stuff made. you wanted to do? <laughs> Surprisingly. Wow. Um, yeah, anyway, it just it's just really bizarre. Um, but I think... Um, you know, it all has to do with really, and I know we've talked about this before, about how you respond to it. You know, so often, I think you mentioned last time we talked uh, that you mentioned about how you kind of look for, and and forgive me if I, I'm not quoting you properly, but you, you look for almost something to be sad over or something to beat yourself up about. Yes, um, in you, my you previous life, yes. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> and 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 I almost, I, I, I kind of feel that too. It's like, I feel like I want to be, and I have been sad. I've had been heartbroken, but it's like I almost kind of look for that sometimes. And there are days when I get up, and it's just like, it's that kind of woe is me. And I want everyone to to look at me and go, "Oh man, you've had a really rough time." We visited some friends uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had dinner at their house that we have known for a, quite a while. Um, we'd worked with them years ago, so I, I'd say probably ten or twelve years. We've known them for a good period of time, and we haven't talked since like pre pandemic. So it's been several years since we'd uh, gotten together. And so we finally got together with them, and they were like, oh, man, you've had a really rough couple of years. And I was like, yeah. And, you know, it was really good to hear that from validation, someone. Yeah. yeah, it was a validation. I guess that's what it was looking for. Um, but it wasn't like I was wallowing in it. I just kind of shook my head and went, yeah, thanks for thanks for noticing. But that was it. it we didn't talk about it anymore. I didn't ask, you know, can I cry on your shoulder? Can you pour me another glass of whiskey? Pray can, for me. You know, pray for me. It wasn't anything like that. It was just like, yeah, I, I appreciate that you saw that. You know, you heard the stories that we told, and they told some stories. They had some rough times too. But anyway, yeah, I just I, I feel like it's it all depends on how you navigate that and how you and it's okay because we all navigate that with wanting to be uh validated for our feelings i guess validated for the hurt for the trouble that we've gone through and Absolutely. i think that's okay to a point yeah. but we don't you it's i don't want to be caught there's i take that back i do want to be coddled sometimes <laughs> but i don't i don't get that and it's probably good that i don't um i think one real great thing that you kind of i don't know you didn't really point it out but it makes a great like that is what you describe is like i've said way many times like the first 48 50 years of my life yeah that always that thing you felt where oh, i kind of want to go there right right it's like that's how quick <laughs> it can take somebody who's never experienced it and kind of it just it's like being lulled into a dream or something yeah and it's that same I've t we've talked about like raging out and stuff and you can ah there's there's a high in that 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 melancholy boohoo stuff has a weird like kind of it's not a high high but it's a similar thing yeah and it's there's something it just like I said it kind of soothes you and draws you in almost and it's like this shouldn't be comforting mm -mm. why am why is it so comforting to feel bad about myself or to feel bad about my situation or to sit and mull over all the bad shit that's happened like i said it's a, there's only two stories it's either all the bad stuff i've done or all the bad stuff that's been done to me there's right. no other story yeah. it's it's just one of those two but yeah
So I think it's real important that people know it doesn't have to be something you've dealt with your whole life. It can grab you. Right, right. It can, and it can grab you. And, and, you know, you can have a rough patch. You can have a rough couple of years. Um, and, and that's okay. I, I think, you know, I, to, to think that your entire life or, or a long period of your life can be just smooth sailing without any trouble, uh, it's probably kind of, kind of naive, I guess, to think that. For and, sure, but, but to, we all but, still hope for it. <laughs> right, and there's, and you should. And, and you we're all a little it. disappointed when it turns out, once again, that's not right. how it is. Yeah. Let me say right. this about the validation of those things, though. I, it's my belief that if people were properly validated, like what you experienced, when mm -hmm. they go through something like that, people would heal much more quickly. Yeah. Part of the big reason people can't heal is because they can't even deal with the fact, is it like, okay, that I feel this way? Because whatever, how you were raised, societal pressures, cultural norms, whatever you want to throw at it. You know, we have yeah. this expectation thing and we're looking at ourselves through everybody else's eyes and, oh man, should I bring this up? Should I admit to this? And so it's hard for us to say we've had a problem. It's hard for the people around us because they haven't had practice either to know what to say. And we've talked yeah. about that on so many occasions going into a funeral. It's like, what do you say? Well, sometimes the best thing's nothing. Right. Zero. Go, yeah, because yeah, that's what I've got to offer. Right. Walk through the line, hug people. And that's, and, and, and you know, having, having been in ministry for so many years, you know, you, you, there's a pressure to want to say something when someone's in a position like that, to be able to go, yeah. or you, you, you want to, I want to say something. I remember this pressure when someone would say, oh, I have a loss or this or whatever. And I want to say something that makes them go, oh, you're right. That makes me feel so much better. And that's so much pressure. Yeah. For for me and 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 like I said the other night when we were visiting with some friends it was like it was just nice for him to say man you've had a rough few years yeah that's tough I mean and it was like mental note that the next time you're in like a situation not right. you but anyone listening right you're yeah, in a absolutely. situation where you don't know what to say affirm that person just say dude that sucks <laughs> validating people. Like when they have an injury, when something's gone wrong, it helps toward healing. It doesn't leave them out there floating in limbo. Because most people, like I said, that's the encouragement they need. So you can use that, like I said, just in the, you know, passing through that funeral line. What am I going to say sometimes? Man, this really sucks. Right. <laughs> Be like, that will, that will get it done. That's the sentiment. Right. That you're in a terrible situation. And, and wow. And, yeah. and, and in a case like that, when someone says, hey, thanks for coming, they really mean it, yeah. you know, because it, it seems like it's, it's not a lot presence. off our shoulders. If we just go to a funeral and we're just like, I feel like I just, I went because you invited me and I heard, and I knew your dad or whatever it was. And it was like, I just went and it was like, and people say, thanks for coming. They really mean that. And mm -hmm. that that's enough. Usually just being there for people. And so, because I like I, to argue, you had mentioned okay, coddling. Argument. You don't want to be coddled. Another good point. I, no, I do, like, but I didn't think it was yeah, healthy for a long period of time. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Validating someone happens like once or twice. Like someone who comes back and repeatedly wants you to validate them over the same thing and needs to drag to, they're having problems. They're stuck in a way your, your little word of encouragement is not going to help. And right. probably the best right. thing you can do is try to then withdraw from the coddling. You don't have to dehumanize yep. them or treat them bad. But right. when you feel that moving on and you'll feel it moving into the conversation, you're like, let's try uh, time to get, root, distract, yep. pull out, time to go, something. But anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Which uh to... which reminds me, I have a I have a connection that I'm I've I'm making with a with a, a person who I was friends with long ago and they've been struggling with a lot of things in their life and they've gone through a lot of change and they a lot of stuff been going on and and there was so I I'd been connecting and texting and we phone called a couple of times and, and Instagram back and forth and so we made a little bit of a connection. Well, I went through a period of radio silence and I was tending to my family, tending to my business. There's some things going on. I took my wife on a trip for our our 27th uh, wedding anniversary, and they text in the middle of this trip, "Hey," with a sarcastic. I'm just hearing it. I know I hate. This is why I hate text message. They were like, "Hey, thanks for checking on me," and I'm just like. I'm not going to answer that right now. <laughs> I no just don't way. want to because in my mind, no it way. sounds sarcastic. And even though I've had a little bit of radio silence, I just haven't been able to connect. And again, that comes with that unnatural kind of coddling mm -hmm. sense that we, we want to have. 
Um, there was something else I was going to say to that effect that you were talking about, but I, I, I completely lost it. Lost it. Anyway, anyway, it's fine. And thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, I remember what it was. I remember what it was. I remember what it was. So I've got another prediction. Ooh. So as, as, as some of you may know or may not know or don't even care, I'm, I'm a bit of a prophet because I've, I've predicted a few things in our society that oh, cool. have changed. Yeah. Get ready. Uh, Take one notes. of the most one of the most recent ones, which I I feel is coming along, which I think we talked about on our show maybe years ago, was the normalizing of uh, pedophilia being a condition and and being and that was and I had that prediction years ago. I mean, decade probably a decade ago. And I t I remember sitting down right. with my daughter and talking about that, and she was like, "Ah, it's so gross." I'm like, "We're coming to that. We're coming to that point where it's going to be normalized as a as a thing." Uh, so my next thing is. This is it. And I feel like that I'm, I'm going to be that guy on, on Fox News or CNN News that, you know, says invest in this, invest in this. Ooh, you ready? Yep. Whatever creates real connection, real life connection with people, I think is coming up because we've got the here's the advent of AI, chat GPT, all this other stuff is going to be taking away Well, I say it's going to be taking away. It's going to be doing a lot of jobs of, of people that you know, have done other things before and then all of a sudden we're not, you know, and now you can have an AI companion on your phone to talk to you and coddle you and talk to you mm -hmm. about different changes and things like that. When you talk, it talks back to you and remembers things that you've said and blah, 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 blah. I believe we're coming to the age of moving towards real human connection. And I'm talking about and I think the furthest point would be like what you and I are doing right now. We're talking face to face, but we're doing it over video, over a distance. Right. But I think anything that brings real connection with other people is going to be the next big game changer because people are just going to be so consumed by AI, by automation, by social media, watching people right. who have said things on social media we, weeks we have ago, talked months about ago. This in the past. Yeah. I don't remember when it was. We talked about the topic because Maybe that was did. kind of what we were discussing is what, what form that might take, what that might mm -hmm. look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just... I'm curious as to what form that might take. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. It's uh, such a crazy time right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It is crazy. Um, yeah. And it's it's so hard not to um, get caught up, I guess, in uh, the the chaos and the. You know, I was talking to my son today about can't. He was like, "You heard of cancel culture?" I'm like, "Yeah." And so he's talking about all this, Once. you know, yeah, this cancel culture stuff. And you know, I said, "Hey, you know what? Culture cannot cancel something it did not create." And he was like, "Ooh, that's good." He said he said he was watching somebody the other day where like they were talking about cancel culture was completely new. This new thing called cancel culture. And he was like, hasn't it been around forever? Didn't they try to kill Jesus? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they, they, in fact, they did. <laughs> that should be. They it. didn't That's, like what he said. A, there's another T-shirt. Jesus picture. Yes. Jesus, they canceled me first. Yeah, they canceled if they me. canceled me, they will most certainly cancel you. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, great that's gold mine gold mine There's put another, him down put him down for five percent of the sales five percent of that t-shirt yeah they canceled me first <laughs> that's funny that's really funny that Man. would be a good t-shirt Mark, marketing gurus here that's it that's it we may not I be able to do anything same? else but we come up with t-shirts like a mother. we can come up with t-shirt <laughs> ideas yeah that's all right yeah yeah, buy the gentleman's or T-shirt. Check out our shop. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our merchandise. Yeah, Check out on, our merch. Come on over to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We love to have you. You know, well, you know, this is this become, quality of become conversation. A, become a show sponsor. Probably should stay free. Did you do? Did you go do karaoke this last week? The karaoke place closed, it didn't it? It was closed. Well, this last week, now, Isabel is here for spring break, and I don't have anywhere to go on Sunday. Oh, that was right. the only Sunday night place, so I'm I'm considering other options. Uh -huh. There's, okay. on Wednesday night, I believe there's a place, like, right down, not too far from us, not all the way in town, but down at the next exit. There's, like, a little mini mall and stuff back down there, and there's a bar, and it's supposed to have karaoke on Wednesday nights. So one of these Wednesday, Wednesday nights. nights, I'm going to toddle down there and see what that's like. One of these nights. All right. So I am, I am, I, you promised me, and I don't remember when you promised me. I think you said it was in the 90s that we would do a worship 
karaoke. <laughs> I didn't promise anything. You did. Thing. You did. We, I heard you promise. I made it up it in my heart. <laughs> no, that's a promise. <laughs> we're going to do it. And I'm going to come down, down there. I said, he promised. I remember. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up there, and we're going to do a, a, a 90s karaoke worship night. You'll be bummed. As I was. But Why? 1991, one of the hits in the top 100 was Michael W. Smith. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally bummed. Which I one? Know. Friends of Friends Forever? No, it was no, the 80s. No, uh, Place in This World. Ah, my place in oh, this I listened world. to a clip of it, I'm like, oh, man, that voice. How could anybody listen to that? And the thought of trying to sing like that, that gravelly, yeah, the back of your throat thing that he does is like, <laughs> yeah, which they, and all that was, I was reminded by, I was watching the Oscars last night and I was thinking, ah, the music, there was a couple of music acts that were pretty decent. Uh, and surprisingly, Lady Gaga was one of them. She's a talented vocalist, I believe. She's not untalented at all. She's just. No, talented. she's very talented. Uh, she was very good. And the rest of them were just like, oh, and the, there was the, the, the dance routine from, from one of the movies from India that was really cool. But all the rest of them were like, what? Why are you even on the stage? That is terrible. So I told Deborah, I said, Doug and I are going to do a worship character uh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> if those people could be broadcast I, I, if you across the nation, if you, wanna, if you want to come do it, I will definitely do it with you. I all would, right, all right. Never, and it can be, it can be an, it can be an off night. We don't have to take up one of your regular nights. We could do like a, ooh, we should do a Sunday night worship karaoke. Come on now, come on somebody. That would, that would awesome. be awesome. Oh, or like Sunday afternoon, right after all the church broadcasts get over. <laughs> Sunday day drinking karaoke. <laughs> day drinking worship karaoke. All right, I'm looking. I'm looking on the calendar right now. Let's oh, that would be together. beautiful. That would be funny. Let's do that. Let's do that. Easter. So, okay, this Easter weekend. <laughs> I think Easter weekend. Uh, it's too much. It's too much. But that would be no, that, no, that's would, really, that, that would be, be really good. Do you think people would show up on Easter weekend and watch that? I never know if anybody's going to show up. This is an unknown thing. It is what an unknown did, what quantity. If uh, no, I would do Good Friday, but I can't. I got something going on Saturday. Friday and Saturday. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It would still be funny. Let's do it the weekend before. Let's do it the 2nd of April. Pre Easter. Yep. Is that Good Friday or Wicked Wednesday or something? There's got to be some kind of holy day in that, right? Uh, well, um, the, no, the it's feast not a holy of the day. annoyance. <laughs> it's not. It's not a holy day. I was thinking, no, it's not Monday, the, Thursday, the, the third day of irritation. It's Easter Monday is a thing Damn. as well. Easter Monday, Monday, Thursday. We've already missed Ash Wednesday. When does Lent? Lent? Lent concludes on. Is it conclude on Saturday night? Is it? Is right before Easter? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> anyway, I'm so bad at religion, <laughs> but I was happy to sing "Losing My Religion" because I had I fully relate to this song. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a great I've song. Lost my religion. I've lost my religion, I, which is not I, a bad thing. I, I think. don't feel like it is. <laughs> no, I don't think. As long as you don't lose your relationship, lose your religion, but don't lose your relationship. Because you can't become a cheeseburger by going to McDonald's. You can't. You can't become a car by walking into a garage. But you can become Just... dead by walking into a car. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't. Absolutely. True story. Uh, well, we've been all over the place tonight. We thanks for you joining us. Thank was you very much episode? for joining us tonight. Did you have a that was an set? episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. I know. And and there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a glitch in this one, but that's all right. We're just gonna keep pushing it's forward. It's glitchy, because... but but please, you know, one of the nicest things you can do for people, like the I think can't think who it is that said it, and I never can, but it's the, the the first act of love is is paying attention. And and by paying attention to someone you show them you love them. By one of the another great way you can love somebody is just affirm what they're feeling affirm. you don't have to you don't have to feel it you don't have to like it you don't have to do it but say it's okay for them to feel that way right that will right. speed them on the road to healing just by virtue yep. of them feeling like it's okay to feel that way that they're right. not being ex ostracized extricated uh, excommunicated excommunicated <laughs> and i, I think or i think on, on, on top of that theme. I think on the best thing is just be kind. And sometimes the kindest thing you can do is just be there and not say anything. Be present. That's really, yeah, be present. You know sometimes what's better that's the than kindest a gift? thing you can do. 
being present. A present. <laughs> All right. And with that, we are cheesy. Hey, check us out <laughs> on social I... media. We'd love for you to let us know your thoughts. And if you have questions, we're Wolverine. rooting for you. <laughs> Wolverine. <laughs> that was very random. <laughs>